Hi everybody, I'm Dr. John Diard. Welcome to LifeSpot.com and today I want to talk to you about five ways you can lengthen your telomeres Ayurvedically. What are your telomeres? Telomeres are the protective chromosomal caps that protect your chromosomes. Inside your chromosomes are your genes, your very delicate and very important genetic code. So nature had a way of protecting those genes so they don't express negative traits and we live longer and stave off the disease process. And Nobel Prize winning science has now shown that that's exactly what the telomeres do. If they get shortened, then we age faster and we become more prone to disease. And Nobel Prize winning science by Elizabeth Blackburn did this research and she linked shortening, shortening of the telomeres to an accelerated aging process. So there's lots of really cool ways and I want to talk about the Ayurvedic ways to actually lengthen your telomeres. The first one, no surprise, is actually to reverse negative thinking, right? So if you were to boil Ayurvedic medicine down to one word, that word would be sattva. Sattva means to be loving and giving and kind for no reason. Your cup is runneth over and you have so much joy and love that you can give and care for others and feel no lack or no loss. That's what sattva is. We know that when you do that, your, your telomeres lengthen, the good bugs proliferate, the bad bugs decrease, a hormone they call the longevity hormone called oxytocin increases, your genes are protected. All these are like really crazy, amazing things happen. On the flip side of that, when you're pessimistic, one study showed with a thousand older men who were pessimistic versus older men who were weren't pessimistic, the older men who were pessimistic literally had significantly shorter telomeres. So in the article at LifeSpot.com where I go into detail of this, I, I, I link you to some articles about Ayurvedic psychology that I've written, and I've written a lot about that. And basically the idea is that when you are experience something negative, we have an opportunity to respond with something positive. I like to call it responding to feelings of affliction with affection. And what Ayurveda talks about is the space between the experience and your reaction to that experience. And yoga, breathing, meditation, these tools slow your mind down so you have the ability to actually pause for a minute, widen the gap between your, the experience and your reaction, and you respond hopefully with something negative, with something very positive or something very sattvic. So please check out the article at lifespot.com where I dig into that a little bit deeper. The second one was actually chronic stress. Yep, stress is a powerful shortener of your telomeres, for sure. Uh, in one study, 53% of the, of the population said that their disease, their illness, was directly linked to their chronic stress. Studies show that chronic stress is linked to uh, obesity, metabolic syndrome, high cholesterol, inflammation, cognitive decline, neurological concerns, um, heart health issues, respiratory, lung breathing issues, and immunity. So it's really, really important. And Ayurveda's kind of plan for that was kind of really interesting. Elizabeth Blackburn, who did the Nobel Prize winning research on telomeres, she actually said, well, gosh, if telomeres shorten under stress, then why not study the most go-to stress reliever on the planet, which is either prayer or meditation. So she studied meditation and found that in one study, the telomeres lengthened by 43% from a meditation practice, another one by 30%. There's just no shortage of studies showing that meditation, yoga, and breathing, all of them have a tendency to calm us down and of course, lengthen our telomeres, which is kind of really, really important, right? Which is really neat. The next thing, maybe the holy grail of lengthening your telomeres is something called exercise. You don't have to be a hard body. You don't have to be an ultra marathoner. You don't have to be a weightlifter and pumped up with iron. It turns out that if you exercise three times a week for 45 minutes moderately, you significantly lengthen your telomeres. You literally double them in terms of length, which is really cool. Also, short bursts of, of high intensity interval training. So just doing short bursts, I always think of that like chasing the rabbit. If you were a hunter gatherer, you would chase the rabbit and it would dive in a hole and it would chase it again and dive in a hole. You have that kind of exercise has a powerful effect on lengthening your telomeres. Weightlifting, weight resistance training didn't have lengthening of your telomere, telomere benefit, but it has so many other benefits that are well studied. They always say it's absolutely important to tie that into your, your regime for exercise. Ultra marathon, can you do too much exercise? Do ultra marathoners who are running hundreds of miles or 50 miles or whatever, Ironman triathletes, I always, I did an Ironman and I was always wondering if I lengthened or shortened my telomeres or do I, did I lengthen or shorten my life really is what I really wondered. And it turns out that people who run ultra marathons have long telomeres as well, but they're no longer than the telomeres of the people who actually ran moderately. 
So you don't have to kill yourself, but you do have to move. That's a really important piece of the puzzle. From the Ayurvedic perspective, my first book, Body, Mind, and Support, is all about nose breathing exercise, and we measure nose breathing versus mouth breathing exercise, and we did that. Nose breathing, the brain went into an alpha state, a meditative calm during vigorous exercise. So this to me, we don't have studies on telomeres with this, but I think it's like the perfect storm for lengthening your telomeres because you're giving the body physical activity, but you're also creating a neurological calm. The body, its telomeres lengthen when you're neurologically calm in a meditation, and the body's telomeres lengthen when the physical body is moving. But you can't push it too much, otherwise the body breaks down, and that can be kind of a negative process. So when we did our research, we found that nose breathing exercise actually created a neurological calm during the midst of vigorous activity. We were attempting to, re to repeat or replicate the runner's high, which we did by creating that inner calm and that dynamic physical activity coexisting at the same time. So please read my articles on nose breathing, uh, which I think is really kind of important. The next, uh, next really important piece of the puzzle for lengthening your telomeres is diet, what you eat. You know, Elizabeth Blackburn, when she wrote her book on telomeres, she said there's three kind of enemies to your telomeres. One is inflammation, and there's inflammatory foods. One is oxidation, and there's foods that can help you mitigate oxidation. And the other one is insulin resistant, which is sugar. Let's talk about them for a minute. The foods that are inflammatory are processed food, refined foods, you know, white bread, <clears throat> carbohydrates, things like that that are really refined and processed. Um, Non-organic foods, chemical-ridden foods, those are also really damaging to your telomeres. Studies show that eating uh, anti-inflammatory foods like berries and grapes and kale and broccoli and tomatoes and sweet onions, really important for your telomeres. Omega-3 fatty acids, fish oils, powerfully lengthen your telomeres. So understanding that fish oils, eating fish uh, or taking fish oil supplements, can be, be very effective at lengthening your telomeres. You definitely want to make sure that you have you know, a good amount of omega-3 fatty acids in your blood. One study with over 600 uh, people who had uh, stable heart disease, they measured them and followed them for five years. At the end of the five years, they saw who had shorter telomeres and who had longer telomeres, and the group that um, had the, less, the least amount of omega-3 fatty acids in their blood had significantly shorter telomeres. So that's also another piece of the puzzle. Oxidation. We know that those are just free radicals, and we know that you know the berries and the cherries and the citrus fruits and the plums and all the fruits are loaded with antioxidants. The leafy greens are loaded with antioxidants. Nuts, seeds, whole grains, green tea. So many foods that we can do to mitigate the, the, the impact of oxidation on our body. Next is insulin resistance. <clears throat> One study showed that people who drank a 20-ounce soda every day had the same level of shortening of their telomeres that people were chronic smokers. And we know the damage of smoking is just horrendous. And people who drank 20 ounces of, of a soda uh, uh, per day had the same damage of that. So you really have to do, the, do our best to uh, avoid or mitigate or, or, or reduce the amount of sugar that we're taking in. <clears throat> From the Ayurvedic perspective, it's a plant-based diet with about 10% animal protein. We eat a 10% animal protein diet. You get everything that you need that you don't get in a vegetarian diet. You get your, your, your vitamin B12, your vitamin D, your calcium, your iron, other minerals um, that we all need and sometimes lack on a vegetarian diet. So you don't have to necessarily supplement. That's the Ayurvedic approach. There are certain herbs that have been proven, Ayurvedic herbs that have been proven to uh, lengthen your telomeres. And that's one is called turmeric. Turmeric is a powerful agent for lengthening your telomeres, particularly when you combine it with 16 part turmeric and one part black pepper, which increases the absorption of that by over 2,000%, which is amazing science. Um, and that's our turmeric plus. You can read more about that on my website at lifespa.com. Amalaki, the gooseberry, another amazing antioxidant that's really important for repairing and rejuvenating deep tissues in your body, also lengthens your telomeres. And also fish oils are mini omega 3X, which is a, 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 a omega-3 fatty acid supplement fish oil supplement that is broken down into the monoglyceride form so it actually gets into your blood three times faster and it lingers in your blood three times longer because it's delivered 
in the monoglyceride form versus the triglyceride form so the body doesn't have to break it down. It's, it's delivered in an absolute digestible form. And because we have so many more omega-6s, which are inflammatory compared to the omega-3s that we used to have, now we have 20 to 1 omega-6 to omega-3s. Years ago, it was 20 to 1 omega-3 to omega-6. So we really have to do our best to kind of reverse that and get, the, get that inflammation back down the best we can. And finally, the last one of all is sleep. Um, you know, sleep is really critical. We know that seven hours is the cutoff. If you sleep more than seven hours, you've got the benefit of generally longer telomeres. Anything less, your telomeres are going to shorten. Sleep hygiene is really critical. You know, dimming the lights in the evening, uh, using blue light blockers to block your screens or your television so you're not exposed to blue light that specifically blocks your melatonin. We know melatonin at night produces the, is a, the sort of the so-called sleep hormone. But what melatonin really does is it puts you to sleep so it can then do its job, which is to rebuild, repair, and detoxify you. There is no more powerful antioxidant in the body than melatonin. So don't think of melatonin as a sleep agent. It's really a powerful, powerful antioxidant in the body, the most that the body has. So that's really, really important. And studies have actually shown that taking melatonin, because as we age over 50, you're going to produce less melatonin. So you can use melatonin supplementally to hack the aging process where free radicals tend to ravage us, shorten our telomeres, to accelerate the aging as we get older. That's what getting older is, is shortening your telomeres. And we can sort of stave that off the best we can with doing things like we're talking about today. And melatonin supplementation in one study was shown to, yep, to lengthen your telomeres, slow ovarian aging, which is kind of cool, increase mitochondrial energy, uh, which is really important for longevity because we lose mitochondrial energy production as we age. It increased something called telomerase, which is the protective enzyme that protects your, your telomeres from shortening, and it protects your DNA. So understanding sleep from the perspective of the Ayurveda also includes realizing that Ayurveda was about, oh, you can't sleep, let me give you a sedative. Ayurveda understood that the reason why you don't sleep is because you're exhausted. And we need energy, rejuvenation. We need energy to sedate our own self so we can go to sleep. So when Ayurveda said, instead of sedating an already sedated, exhausted person to, to give them symptomatic relief for sleep, Let's deeply rejuvenate them, not stimulate them, and give them the energy they need so they can sedate themselves. So herbs like ashwagandha, an adaptogen that's been proven to give energy during the day and help you sleep like a baby. So it's not a stimulant, nor is it a sedative to give you that deep, deep rejuvenation. Okay, so there you have it. And a couple of really interesting final points. One thing is um, that you might be surprised to hear. The calorie restriction, intermittent fasting, something that everybody seems to be doing these days, didn't really have any impact on your telomeres one way or another. Just so that you know, coffee, some of the initial research on coffee with the caffeine turned out to be something that's quite good for your telomeres. So a little bit of caffeine maybe goes a long way. Although the study showed you needed four cups a day to do that, that's a pretty whopping dose of coffee. So your, so your coffee so far is good. I have written articles at lifespot.com about the dangers of caffeine, so beware. You know, something that's so good to be true oftentimes isn't, so beware of that. Uh, alcohol, they did studies in the lab and they found that alcohol does damage the telomeres, but they've never been able to replicate that in humans. And in fact, um, you know, what Elizabeth Blackburn, the expert in this field, says is that a little bit of alcohol can actually be quite beneficial for you according to the science. Um, so moderation is something you have to be aware of and then go from there. And then finally, um, diet. Weight loss dieting has been shown to not be any good for your telomeres. If you want to lose weight, think about you know, eating healthy, nutritious food, you know, anti-inflammatory foods, anti-oxidation foods, you know, foods that are going to get rid of the sugar, things like that. Be more physically active. Those will lengthen your telomeres and, of course, um, help you balance your weight quite naturally. I wrote a whole ebook. We did a study on weight balancing, not weight loss, where you can bring your body into balance by regulating your metabolism and getting the, getting the weight that's right for your particular body type. All right, so there you have it. Please read this pretty compelling article on the Ayurvedic ways to lengthen your telomeres, live a long life, stave off the disease process. That's what the telomeres are all about. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. John Duyard. Do you like this video? Don't forget to subscribe and share. This recording is brought to you by LifeSpa, where ancient Ayurvedic wisdom meets modern science. Get access to free health video newsletters by Dr. John at LifeSpa.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease.